As I've been doing more 3D printing, I've been wondering if it's feasible to 3D print leather stamps, like the ones that are used to decorate leather. Sure, I already know it's possible to make a flat relief stamp that can be pressed into leather, but leather stamps are different. What about a tool like this? Can it stand up to the repetitive stress of heavy hammering like our normal metal tools? Bevelers are a common tool that are used in leatherworking to push down the leather along carved lines and increase the depth of an otherwise flat surface. This is an example of a beveler, and it's one of many hand tools that you can find from various makers. This one is by Robert Beard, and they cost anywhere from $50 to $100 per tool or more in some cases. And by the time you add up a large collection of tools, you're looking at a pretty substantial investment. And for somebody who makes a living in part with leather crafting and other crafts, I say it's money well spent. But starting out, this is not something I could have afforded. So my goal with this experiment is not to replace quality handmade tools, but to reduce the barrier of entry of fine leather crafting to make it more approachable by more people. I designed a few prototypes of smooth bevelers that I'm going to be putting to the test. And if I can get a successful result, this might be a game changer for those starting out in leather crafting. It would allow them to rapidly expand their tools and tooling options at minimal cost. Before we jump into the experiments, let me show you how I'm printing these tools and tell you a bit about the printer I'll be using. I'll be unboxing and using the brand new Saturn IV Ultra, which was provided for this video by Eligu. Previously, I had the opportunity to test out the Saturn II and Saturn III Ultra, and so far this Saturn IV is the best yet, with some very interesting new features. For starters, I'm very happy to see that they finally did away with the cumbersome lid and replaced it with a flip-open design. This is a nice quality of life improvement. The build plate now simply locks into place with a quick lever, and it no longer requires manual leveling. Cool. I'm very happy about quality of life improvements like this, and I think it makes 3D printing more approachable by a broader audience. The screen is a 10 inch 12K mono LCD. The way resin 3D printers work is by projecting a UV light through an LCD screen to mask each layer. Anywhere that this UV light makes contact with the liquid resin, it will harden it. And each layer is printed within a few seconds. It doesn't matter how much is on your build plate. The whole layer is printed at the same time, and this also makes resin printers faster than FDM printers in most cases. The appearance has changed a bit. It seems to be more of a sci-fi theme, and I'm guessing the additional angles and geometry serve to stiffen up the lid. There are many types of resin available and you have to pick the right one for the job. So for this experiment, I'm going to be trying out Eligu's ABS 3.0 resin to see if it can stand up to the abuse. Most resins are suitable for miniatures and display. That is definitely not going to hold up by being beat on infinitely by a hammer. I'm just going to jump straight into printing our bevelers. I used the default profiles provided by Eligu in their recommended slicer. I kept everything as straightforward as I could to eliminate variables for the sake of testing. And if it works out, you'll easily be able to print your own without any tweaking. One of the more intriguing new features is the way this printer lifts up on each layer. Instead of raising the build plate up and down for each layer, it pivots the entire resin container forward at an angle. This reduces the reset time between each layer, and it's said to cut the printing time compared to the Saturn III, which is already pretty fast, in half. The reason I chose resin printing for this project is because of the detail level you can get with them compared to filament style printers. This is because the layer lines on these machines can be set to be incredibly thin. It means that the prints will come straight off the build plate with a very smooth finish, which is very important when stamping leather because any imperfections or layer lines will transfer to your piece. So you really want to do everything you can to have smooth and crisp details on your tools. If you've been thinking about trying out resin 3D printing, please follow the link in the description and check out the Eligu Saturn IV or Saturn IV Ultra. I designed these stamps in a very rudimentary way. The square design is temporary. My thinking is that this will transfer the force more evenly compared to designing a narrow neck that exists on most stamps, which may introduce weakness. If they survive the initial tests, I'll start working on some new designs with more classic rounded shafts in future revisions. You may be wondering why I'm even bothering making these tools. I already have every leather tool under the sun. In part, I'm doing it for you guys, especially those who are starting out or who may be interested in working with leather but can't afford all of the fancy tools. These 3D printed tools are not meant to replace a quality steel tool, but what it will do is let you get a whole set of leather stamps for less than the cost of even one single quality tool. And if you start leather working and you decide it's not for you, you'll have lost nothing. And if you like it, you'll have a set of tools you can build on and use those to earn better tools if you want to. 
Another reason I have to make these tools is simply because I want to get better at making tools. There are many times that I've wanted tools that didn't exist, so I'm looking at this as a good reason to practice. So these designs are a first test though, and I just need to see if this is feasible. So let's do some testing, shall we? I'll take some scrap vegetable tan leather and just make a few quick lines with a swivel knife. Then I'll start with some gentle but firm taps with a hammer. Well, it didn't break, so that's a good start. These bevelers all share a common shape. The different widths will allow you to fit in different degrees or curves or arcs. There are several different widths from wide to narrow. There are three different heights from flat to tall. The taller bevelers will give a deeper and more narrow bevel, while the flatter will give a more wide and planished look. Wide bevelers are great for longer lines without much curve, and the thin ones are necessary for tighter bends. Your daily drivers are probably going to be somewhere in the middle of these ranges. Let's grab one and take it for a spin. What does it take to break one of these? That's pretty pretty tough. Maybe one of the thinner ones. Jesus. As I was tooling, I noticed there was some bounce in the tools. It's not a deal breaker, but it doesn't have the same satisfying thud when the hammer connects with the tool. But I got to thinking, the reason we use polymer-based mallets like this is to prevent from damaging the metal tools. A metal hammer will eventually wear down a metal tool, but if the tool itself is polymer-based, well then why not try a metal hammer? The result? I would say it's a noticeable improvement. It's workable, but you could say it hits different. I'll definitely continue testing and report back later on this. Surprised this is holding up, honestly. Huh. Hitting it pretty hard. Obviously not as hard as I can, but it is interesting that it's holding together. So this is one of the wider ones. But if we switch over to one of the more medium, narrow ones, then we can go around the arc more easily. Resin is simply not as dense as steel, so it doesn't feel like what I'm used to. And how it holds up to long-term testing is yet to be seen, but it seems to do the job. And given the material cost of around 10 cents or so per tool, how can you go wrong? If you don't already own a 3D printer, the price per tool may not mean much to you, because a 3D printer is not the smallest investment. But if you ever plan on getting one, or if you know somebody who has one, or if you ever want to purchase from a print-on-demand service, you can still come out ahead. I'm encouraged by these initial results, and I'll proceed with additional designs to add to a 3D printable tool collection, and we may even offer some limited production ourselves at some point, and if there's enough demand we'll work with some partners to handle distribution. I'll be back soon with our next video. Thanks for watching, and if you're considering getting a 3D printer like what you saw in this video, please consider supporting us and our sponsor Eligu by checking the link in the description. Until next time. This is a piece of bone. I like to use this as a slicking tool, and I'll use it to clean up some of the lines. Well, there you have it. You can draw your own conclusions, but I think this was a successful proof of concept, and these tools would have been helpful to me whenever I was starting out. We'll have to see how they hold up over time, and I'll report on this later. But for now, I think I'll make these available, and I'll also welcome any and all feedback on these tools and suggestions on any new design, so leave your comments below. I'll put a link to these in the description so that you can get them and try them out. I'll also add them to our welcome pack for our guild, so if you're already a member, you can get them for free.